and I'm excited to be here because you're here. So I'm going to let my friends in from Zoom. It's Anna Gibbs. It's your Monday morning mojo. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It is another Monday and we're going to get the party started. So welcome back. And um, I'm, I know that you all had a great weekend because you look at you, you're all smiling. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's, um, let's just talk a little bit about getting our mojo going this morning. Um, it's always a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thanks for coming back every week. I never know who's going to jump on. Hello, everybody who's on Facebook. Um, and I am excited to share with you some ways to beat burnout. And we're going to talk about uh, just how to keep everything moving forward. You know, it's a busy time uh, with the holidays coming. And it is really, you know, everything I think that we do today takes a lot of thought and a lot of effort. And uh, some of you have different things that you're working on in your businesses and your personal life. And it could be a challenge and it could be easy to feel like you're getting burnt out. So, um, and, and I'm probably sharing this with you because I needed to, to write some thoughts on it myself last right. week, research. So, you know, that's, that's life imitating art or vice versa. I'm not really sure. Um, and so, you know, I love having this group every Monday and, uh, and, and I called it Monday morning mojo because your mojo is your energy. And actually the literal definition of mojo refers to magic. So it's about getting your personal energy going, your magic, and it's about really getting the confidence you need to face whatever is in front of you for the day, for the week. And so I believe that this Monday Morning Mojo group is an opportunity for all of us to regain our confidence, our energy, our enthusiasm, especially when it comes to being successful, especially when it comes to reaching any of our goals. And, you know, there are times when you probably can, can feel like you're losing a little bit of that mojo. And in my research, it was interesting. I found it a couple of times. Uh, some people were suggesting ways to get your mojo back. And you know what was always on the list? Ask for help. Get support was always there. So I think this is the group where you can find a dose of inspiration, a dose of you know enthusiasm, where there are people who are going to support you and help you get back on track and get your mojo going. Uh, so remember, your mojo is your best energy. So we're going to start this week with the best of intentions. We're going to start this week also being realistic about the things that we can accomplish and maybe realistic about some of the things that uh, we need help with some of the things that might require more planning, um, because I think that that can oftentimes lead to some burnout. So am I anyone else feeling like they're starting to feel a little overwhelmed or get burnt out? You know, we're getting towards. Yeah, I see Michelle's nodding her head. Uh, Jill, no, you Rosemary's got her hand up. Jill, you're always smiling, Jill. <laughs> yes. Are you feeling a little burnt out at times or that's not a problem for you? Oh no, absolutely. You know, it's a, a roller coaster. Yeah. And and part of this morning is my ah, look, somebody just popped in. It, it is is getting sort of to the crest and coming on the mojo Monday. So this is this is a real charge for me. So that's why I smile. You know, sometimes I wonder if I shouldn't have done this group in the middle of the week, right? Because for some of us it can be a little easier to feel that energy on a Monday morning and optimism and wanting to put our best foot forward. And then somewhere around Wednesday or Thursday, it's like, oof, I got to keep pushing up the hill. So, um, you know, I that think would, that, that- That would be your night shift group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So note to self, replay some of these videos on Wednesday and see what you need to, to get back uh, on track. So I'm going to share with you eight ways to beat burnout. Uh, and what is burnout? Burnout is when you feel like uh, you're losing a little bit of that energy when you feel like you may be uh, getting fuzzy with your thoughts and not super clear. Maybe uh, you just don't have the energy that you did uh, and you're starting to feel depleted in that area, right? Uh, and really, I think sometimes burnout can just lead to plain overwhelm. And personally, I try very hard not to use the word overwhelmed. That's just one of my personal rules uh, because I think when you start to say you're overwhelmed, 
you're shutting down and you're limiting your thoughts around what are the possibilities and what is it that I can do to get, get moving again. Uh, so, so for me personally, I try to avoid the word overwhelm. Um, and just popped into my head, uh, the word frustration. So um, at Keller Williams, we have access to great thinkers and, and leaders and coaches. And Diana Kokoska has shared with us and uh, she was someone who really uh, grew and launched our uh, coaching division at Keller Williams. And she always talked about the difference between frustration and fascination. So she would challenge you to think of, um, instead of thinking of it in terms of being frustrated, could you be fascinated? And so when you think in terms of fascination, if you're fascinated, immediately you start to wonder and ask questions, right? And the minute you ask questions, you open yourself up to possibilities. In contrast, when you're feeling frustrated, those feelings of frustration can lead to negativity. They can even lead to anger. And that those negative emotions shut you down and stop you from thinking. So I love that too. Uh, and I think it ties into our topic this morning. So you may wanna write that down, uh, really changing your feelings of frustration into fascination and asking more questions. All right, so here are eight ways to beat burnout. The first one that I came up with is awareness versus avoidance. So first you have to be aware that you're feeling frustrated because some of us wanna push that down. Some of us don't wanna admit that we're feeling less than superhuman. And so we try to put it away and we try to tell ourselves that you know we're gonna plow through. Plowing through doesn't always really help. So I think the first step is being aware that you're feeling frustrated, right? Because we know what we resist persists. So the more you resist the feeling, the more it's going to show up and the more overwhelmed. And I, as I said, that word is, is one that I choose to not get into, right? But the more you're going to feel hopeless or helpless. So I think the first step is awareness and, in, and admitting that you're feeling uh, somewhat burnt out, okay? Because once you're aware of something, then you get to do something about it. The second uh, tip or, st or um, step that I would have for you this morning on how to beat burnout is good old sleep. And as I get older, I find I need more of it. <laughs> and uh, I'm not ashamed to tell you that I could be in bed on most weekdays at nine o'clock, <laughs> uh, but I get up early. I get up at five, 5.30. So here's the, the thing, you need to really acknowledge how much sleep do you need to feel good, to feel refreshed, to feel like you are uh, getting started with the day, the day with some energy and some clarity. Uh, there's countless research done on the benefits of sleep, right? So it will affect our stress levels. It will affect our overall health. Uh, so I think it goes without saying that we need to make sure we're getting enough sleep, especially during a time in your life when you might have a lot of things on your plate, when you may be working on different projects, um, or, you know, like I said, even just the holiday season is coming upon us and there's a lot more to do. So I think getting enough sleep is really important and it's really going to be a big part of your overall health right now. So the third uh, step to beating burnout is hydration. Just good old water. And that is so important again to your body because when your body is in uh, dehydration mode, it activates your stress hormones. So if you're dehydrated, uh, it's gonna raise cortisol levels, which everyone knows is the stress hormone. And then that causes other chain reactions in your body. So a good rule of thumb is to take your weight, divide that in half, and that's the number of ounces of water you should be drinking during the day. And I know for me, dehydration has a big effect on my uh, overall performance, right? Because I feel that when I'm dehydrated, I tend to get a headache, which by the way, is the number one cause for headache. And do you know what the number one cause for uh, hunger is? Dehydration. So dehydration is, uh, excuse me, hydrating is so important to regulate all the systems in the body. Uh, it has a mind body effect. So I couldn't give you the steps to beating burnout without talking about water. All right. Number four, movement, exercise. Um, so this can look different for me every day too, right? But at the end of the day, if we can just get up and move around, 
uh, that can do a lot to change our state. It can change not only our physical state, our emotional state, our mental state. So really plugging in breaks throughout the day to get up and move is super important. And I learned that personally during these last few months working from home uh, due to the COVID situation that we're all facing. Um, I realized that I was sitting in this chair for so many hours uh, without even getting up sometimes. So it's really important that you recognize the need to move your body. Now, it can also, uh, it goes without saying that we need to really put in some exercise in our routine. And again, that looks different for everyone. So getting up and moving throughout the day is going to help. Uh, but I think that we all have to look at what is the right fitness plan for, for you? What does that look like? For some of us, it might be working out 30 minutes a day. For others, it could just be once or twice a week. Um, I believe that something is better than nothing. So getting started in, the, in this area is, is going to be an improvement rather than not doing any exercise or movement. Uh, and as you exercise, you know, again, let's talk about hormones. Uh, as you exercise, your body starts pumping endorphins and endorphins are the feel good hormones, right? So that can do a lot to release the steam valve. Um, as I like to call it, just kind of let some of that pressure go from the day. Uh, and it, and as you release more uh, endorphins in your body, your mind, um, that, that's a feel good neurotransmitter. So it starts to open up the pathways in your brain to start thinking differently, uh, to start thinking more optimistically, to start thinking in terms of solutions, right? Um, so exercise and moving throughout the day is going to be huge. Okay. Number five tip for beating burnout anytime, but especially during the fourth quarter when we're trying to push through to finish our year strong and, and again, start working on other things like holidays or home improvement or whatever it might be. Uh, I think tip number five is really simple yet super important. It's breathing. Number five is breathing. So if you could take a moment right now, recognize your breathing and pay attention to that pattern, right? And so if you could, again, maybe tie it into those movement breaks, add in 30 seconds, even 60 seconds of breathing, deep breathing, and especially breathing through in and out through your nose, uh, the, that, uh, that will actually lower your stress immediately. So if you're ever feeling anxious, uh, if you're ever experiencing some sort of a, um, even something severe like a panic attack, uh, taking that, that breath in and out through your nose will regulate your, your body and regulate your stress hormones again. Uh, and so when you breathe deeply like that, it actually sends a, a message to your brain to say, cool down, cool down. So breathing in and out through your nose can be a great way to uh, just regulate some of that uh, energy during the day and really, again, send a message to your brain that, okay, we just need to take a little break, we need to take a little mental and emotional health break, uh, and, and it will activate your body's relaxation response. So breathing is big. Okay, so let's talk about the next tip on here, which is clarity. So my message to you uh, is to seek clarity as much as possible, because if you are not clear on what needs to be done, it can start with confusion and actually really escalate right up to chaos if you let it, right? So I was listening to a podcast last week uh, with Brendan Burchard, and uh, I wrote it down because this was so good. He said, a person without direction loses confidence and effectiveness. A person without direction loses confidence and effectiveness. So one of the things that uh, we instill uh, in our leadership team and what I like to work on with people as their coach uh, is, is really to create clarity around what the goals are and more importantly, what the action steps need to be to get there. So we have some great tools. I've shared some of them before on Mojo and I can put it on the Facebook group. Um, Gary Keller and Jay Papazon wrote a book called The One Thing and uh, they have uh, really broken down uh, how to be effective. And there are some tools that are available in the book and also on their website. And I'll post them again on the Facebook page. Um, and one of those tools is what we call a 411. So what that does is it, it uh, takes your, your big goal, maybe your you know, yearly goal, 
helps you break it down to what needs to be accomplished each month and then breaks it down further into what do I need to do this week. And from there, you're identifying those big rocks, right? Those top 20% items. And that's what can show up then on your calendar. You need to time block the time to execute on those activities. So that kind of clarity can really help to reduce the feeling of being burnt out because you're clear on what needs to be done. You're clear on the activities. You're not feeling uh, fuzzy about it. And it doesn't, it, so when you're clear on what needs to be done, that in itself can keep your confidence levels up, right? And so that's where we come back to getting, keeping our mojo up, right? Because confidence then uh, can help us create enthusiasm around what needs to be done. So if you're not clear on your goals and you don't have direction, it could be really easy to feel burnt out. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's so important for you to have clarity around what needs to get done. Okay, so the next one that I have on my list is perspective, perspective. So, so yeah, so we just talked about getting clear on our goals and our actions. Now I just want to talk a little bit about what you're looking at. That, that's what perspective is, right? It's, it's what's in, in your site. So when you change your perspective, you can change your thoughts. And when you change your thoughts, you tend to change what you are doing. And when you change what you're doing, you get different results. So when you, when you look at things and then you look at them from a different angle and see a different perspective, that can do a lot to change things for you. So let's take it in the most simplest of terms first, perspective. Get up and work out of a different area of your home or office for, you know, once in a while, right? Because if we're talking about burnout and we're talking about uh, mixing it up a little bit, right? Because redundancy can lead to burnout too. So I find sometimes I just have to work out of a different room in my home or you may, you know, if you're working in an office, you may want to, you know, find some variety in how you're even just creating the environment around you, right? So that can do a lot. Um, now let's take it bigger in terms of our perspective and how we see things, right? Because when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. So is it important for you right now to examine your perspective? Is it important for you to really think about how you're viewing the world, how you're viewing your goals right now, and, and the process to get to your uh, goals? Uh, is it important for you to challenge or examine the way that you're seeing things, the way that you are relating to things, right? Because if we continue to think in the same patterns, we tend to do the same things and get the same results. So that can lead to burnout too. So I think that, that's why I put it on the list. I think when we change the way we look at things, it sort of keeps things fresh and it keeps things from getting into that, that pattern uh, that, that can lead to feeling like nothing's really changing around me. Uh, and for a lot of us, we need that change, whether we want to admit it or not. So I think that's eight, but so those are my tips for, um, beating burnout. And I think that, you know, again, it's important for us to always recognize that the greatest project, the greatest opportunity that we have on our to-do list or calendar is time to work on us. And if we're not putting ourselves first, that can lead to burnout. And I wanted to share some thoughts with you about how to avoid that. So we have a couple minutes. Just curious if anyone has any thoughts or questions. I don't see anything in the chat. But for you guys on Facebook, if you have any thoughts or questions or ahas, I love hearing them. You can put them on the Facebook page. I read them all. Uh, and if you uh, are here with me on Zoom and you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear from you guys. Great topic. I think um, I ran into a friend over the weekend and she was talking about burnout because she's a caretaker. Uh -huh. uh, and, and that sort of fits very nicely into the points you were making, you know, how easy it is to get into a place without uh, relief. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. And let's just, you know, give a shout out to all our healthcare workers and uh, all of our medical staff, because this has been a very trying year for them. And I, I can't imagine how some of them are dealing with the stress of the job, right? So that's important. Michelle, you had something you wanted to say? Yeah, this a lot of this rings, um, just even tying back to some of the other things that you've talked about in past meetings, like clarity 
and going back to the 80 20 rule and making sure if you have clarity, then you're focusing on what you really should be doing and what's going to have the most impact towards your goals. Um, and then just personally for me, um, you know, turning frustration into fascination. Yeah, I've been looking for a job forever, and that kind of gives me a different maybe look towards how to approach this over the next few weeks. So um, that was a good one. That's great. I'm so glad you got what you needed out of that. Yeah. Rosemary wrote in the chat that it's really the mindset of coming from curiosity and asking questions. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. How do you change frustration into fascination? Ask questions actually ties right into what Rosemary has in the chat here. Um, it's about, first, well, let me back that up. It's really about being aware, right? You need to be, I think some of us are working on autopilot <laughs> and we have to be really aware and conscious of the conversations that are going on right up in here. And so you have to be aware that you may be closed off to possibility and that could be why you're feeling frustrated and ask more questions. So. Turning frustration into fascination is the act of being more inquisitive and curious, right? Because when we get frustrated, when we get frustrated, we tend to start to shut it down. And so by opening ourselves up to possibility and asking questions, now we can turn that energy into something much more powerful because we're we're on this quest for knowledge or information. So that that being inquisitive is is really changing that energy in your mindset. What if you're frustrated about the results of the election? How do you change that? Well, I would say for, for that uh, is to be, again, aware of what you can control versus what you can't, right? Because if you put your energy into things you can't control, that's a recipe for frustration. And so I believe when you look at whatever it is that you can control in your life, and it doesn't have to be even related to uh, the example you gave, which is the election. It doesn't have to even be related to the election. Just focus on things that you have the control to change, right? So for me, I get up every day and I ask, how do I live my best life, right? And for me, um, I'm a very spiritual person and I, you know, God is at the center of my life. So I have something here that I look at every morning and it just says, Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet, tell me what you want me to say, and most importantly, keep me out of your way. So I, I'm just focused on the things that I can do to make my life better, right? So worrying, I said this last week, I think, right? So worrying is like sitting in the rocking chair and expecting that to take you across the front yard. You're not going anywhere by worrying. So what can you put your energy into? That's it's interesting. Productive. I had a conversation with my mom yesterday. I called her and she was in tears. I'm like, oh my God, what's the matter? And she's all upset over Thanksgiving because she doesn't think she's going to be able to celebrate this year the way that it's her favorite holiday, so on and so forth. And I said to her mom, you know, you can be miserable about, about this through Thanksgiving, or you can think about what you really can control. And if you can't have people in your home, what about maybe going out to dinner the day before, the day after, in a in a big restaurant that has a lot of room, et cetera. And by the end of the call, when she realized if I focus on what I can do, she was laughing. It changed her whole mood. She's like, thank you so much. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it really is an effective way to change your mindset. Yeah. You help to change your perspective, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I get it. You know, um, I love big celebrations and uh, I've come from a big family. So, you know, we, we make a big deal out of holidays and the food. Uh, and, and I'm not quite sure what we're doing for Thanksgiving myself. At the end of the day, though, and I, I, I plan to talk about this next Monday, uh, gratitude. At the end of the day, we have to stay focused on what we're grateful for. And what we do have right going for us right now. And one thing I guess I can say, even though um, I'm on the Zoom all day long, I'm grateful for it. If it means that when it comes to holidays, I can still stay in touch with my parents, my siblings, my kids if necessary, right? I mean, I want to believe this is temporary and we'll get back to having those celebrations. And until then, we have to do what is smart and we have to find a way to still stay grateful um, and, and connect, right? So if it means I have to connect through a Zoom or a FaceTime call, then that's what I'll have to do. Uh, and it's temporary, right? So uh, I saw Rosemary said in the chat again, it's about how we react to things. 
see, that's the part that's in your control, right? So I think I've shared this before. You can write this down, E plus R equals O. This is something I learned from Jack Canfield probably 15 years ago in his book, Success Principles. And uh, so e is, e is the event. There are events that are occurring in your life all the time, little, big. And then R is reaction. So the event plus your reaction is what determines your outcome. That's the O. E plus R equals O. Because people want to blame the event, which is honestly, guys, a waste of time, right? Putting all that blame on the event. What is in your control is your reaction to it. That's what determines your outcome. Because we're all going through some events, right, are happening around all of us, yet why is it affecting some more than others? Because of how we choose to respond to it. That is what's in your control. And really understanding that can, uh, can do wonders to alleviate burnout. Great thoughts this morning. Anyone else have anything they want to add? Aha, uh -huh, thoughts before we get on to our day? All right, keep the mojo cranked and focus on the things you can control and put these little, little steps in front of you so that you can incorporate that into your daily routine and avoid burn out, okay? Thanks, Anna. All right, everyone, thanks so much. Yes, Jill, are you referencing a past uh, mojo? Right, the message is about that you actually addressed on November 2nd, the election stress disorder, as we call yeah. it. I take notes here, so. <laughs> so you. In, so yeah. in your recording, if you check back, you can hear yourself speak to that particular topic. <laughs> That's exciting. Thank you for that and uh, that you had that at your fingertips. Yeah, so if you are interested in seeing past uh, episodes <laughs> of Monday Morning Mojo with Anna Gibbs, you can find them on the Facebook group and you can also go to my YouTube channel. It's all there. So you can go back and look at that. Thanks for sharing your reference. I love that. All right, everyone, have an awesome day. Thanks again sure. for being here. I'll see you next week. Take care. All right, Bye. take care. Bye-bye. Bye.